Um, in any case, I appreciate your patience, and uh, I'll, I will, this will be the last piece. It's very hot. But I wanted to emphasize before I go that uh, this is, of course, a political ideology, a political and supremacist ideology. And if it were a secular political ideology, there would be no problem. Everyone would understand that it had to be resisted because it was inimical to our laws and our societal principles. And that would be no problem at all to understand and to identify. But because it is a religion, this is all happening. And so it's very important to emphasize <coughs> in all your public statements, and I'm sure you're already doing this, so pardon me if I'm uh, being redundant, that you are fighting against the political ideology that is at variance with fundamental principles of human rights as enunciated by the United Nations and that you are fighting for those human rights for the freedom of speech for the freedom of conscience for equality of rights of women for equality of rights of non-Muslims with Muslims which is not allowed in Islamic law and to emphasize that it makes no difference if somebody wants to pray to this God or that God as long as they don't bother anyone else with it. As Thomas Jefferson said, if my neighbor has one God or 17, it neither picks my pocket nor breaks my leg. But if my neighbor wants to pick my pocket and break my leg because his God told him to, then it becomes a matter of public policy. And <clears throat> Islam, from its inception, was a political ideology. As a matter of fact, I am now working on a new book, which I, I think they are going to put out in the spring of next year, uh, called Did Muhammad Exist? And actually, the answer is no. Uh, I, started, I, I used to believe in Muhammad. Uh, there's a good one for your film. Uh, Spencer says he used to believe in Muhammad. But I mean, I used to believe Muhammad existed. Uh, that he was a real historical character. He certainly is a coherent personality that we have seen in the world before. A very clever man and a very brutal and selfish man and a very intelligent man. And uh, we've seen people like that in recent history. I, you can fill in the names yourself. But uh, in any case, <clears throat> the more you look at it, the less there is to see. And as I have been studying the earliest sources on this, I see that in the first place, <clears throat> there's no biography of Muhammad written until 150 years after his death. So if you think back, that's like there being no biography of Abraham Lincoln appearing until this year. It would probably be full of legendary material. And it is. Even more. The Arabs certainly poured out of Arabia in the 630s and began conquering the neighboring lands. This is a matter of historical record. However, neither they nor their opponents for 60 years after the conquests began ever mentioned Quran, Muhammad, or Islam. And so they minted coins, they made inscriptions, and they never mentioned any of this. It's not until the Dome of the Rock in 691 that there is a statement that says there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and his servant. When was the Hadith written? <clears throat> in the 8th century, and the 9th. And even the Dome of the Rock inscription, when it says there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and his servant, and then it goes on. It goes on to speak all about Jesus. And four-fifths of it is about Jesus. And how Jesus is not the Son of God, but is only the messenger of Allah and his servant. If you look at the Arabic grammar for where it says, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and his servant, which is the only time he's mentioned, grammatically, it doesn't work as a proper name. Grammatically, it works as a title, the praised one, which is what Muhammad means is the messenger of Allah and his servant. And then it goes on to explain how Jesus is the messenger of Allah and his servant. The whole thing is actually a statement about Jesus that doesn't assuredly mention Muhammad at all. 
So even that is the first mention of Muhammad and Islam, and it's, not, it's doubtful itself. But there's a point to all this. <clears throat> this is all very interesting historical speculation, but there is a very important underlying point, and that is that Islam as a political system is what is primary and what is paramount. And that historically, the political system existed first. And the religion was developed because in those days, what held an empire together was that everyone had the same religion. And the Byzantines were Christians. The Persians were Zoroastrians. And the Arabs came out and conquered, and they had no, no, no cohesive religion. So they invented one. It was only to justify the political ideology. The whole thing was developed. And so, in any case, that's kind of an aside. But, nonetheless, even if you take the standard story of Muhammad as historically accurate, it is fundamentally a political system. And this is the most important point we need to make, because this is the point that will change everything. There are now 23 states in the United States, 23 out of 50, that are considering laws outlawing Sharia. And in every one of those states, there's only one that's actually passed one. 70% of the voters in Oklahoma last year voted to ban Sharia. But then the law was struck down by a judge. And the judge said, it's a religious liberty issue. You cannot infringe upon their religious liberty. And so the point needs to be made, and it needs to be brought home and emphasized and repeated again and again. We are fighting against a political, authoritarian, supremacist ideology. Not a religion. There are a lot of people who say Islam, <coughs> Islam is not a religion at all. I think that's false. Islam is a religion. It purports to relate man to God, which is what a religion does or claims to do. Islam is a religion, but it is fundamentally and primarily a political system. And if we can make that point, then we can begin to sway public opinion and get many more people on our side. And so I leave you with that as a uh, challenge and recommendation, and thank you again for your hospitality here the last few days, your kindness. Uh, I am very honored to be in your presence. I am very uh, uh, in, um, in, in, in awe of your courage and your steadfastness in the face of a situation that is far worse than what we have in the United States so far.